Hi there, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. This is going to be in your seventh grade textbook, and it will be in chapter one, section three. Today, we're going to work on converting unit rates, and that's going to start with us on textbook page 26 and go through textbook page 28. As usual, you're going to have your lined paper, colored pencils, regular pencil with an eraser, your hard math textbook. You should be following along as we go through the problems. You want to make sure to bring your happy math attitude, and you want your headphones in case you're in a distracting area. The first part of this is going to start on textbook page 26. Really quickly, because this is something that's a little bit different than we normally do, um, right here you see two tables of measurements. And if you would like, you can either copy these handwritten on your notebook paper, or you can make a photocopy and stick them on your notebook paper. It's up to you. Either one is fine. But you do want to have these right at the top of your paper. All right, you should have your lined notebook paper, and it should be set up just like you see here, 7.1.3, convert unit rates. Starting on textbook page 26, I'm going to insert a photo of the table that you need to either have copied or photocopied. So as you can see, I've written a note here for you in red that you need to write neatly or photocopy and tape. And that means photocopy and tape it to your notes. So these are going to be the customary units of measure. The customary units of measure are usually what we use here in the United States. And then we have the metric units of measure. That's pretty much what the rest of the world uses. So um, you are going to have to oftentimes convert between the two. So you definitely want to be familiar with the relationships between these two tables. So as you can see, my first note here says each of the pairs above can be written as a unit ratio, must have a denominator of one. So just like a unit rate, you must have a denominator of one. So um, when I say the pairs, I mean like, for instance, this would be a pair, this would be a pair, and so on. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a couple examples of unit ratios. All right, so as you can see below, I've written 12 inches over one foot. So I'm going to go ahead and erase the two circles here that I've made so that you can see the ones that I'm showing now. So the 12 inches to one foot is going to be right here, okay? You also have 16 ounces in one pound. You can see that relationship right here. And now you can see we have 100 centimeters in one meter, which you can see right here. Now I abbreviated centimeters and meters because I am running out of space. So you get the idea, again, the, one, the way that you know which one to put on top and which one on bottom, as far as the unit ratio, you know that the one has to be on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and flip back to the page in the chapter just so that you can see what I'm talking about here. It is important for you to notice that the numerator and the denominator of each of the unit ratios shown are equal, equal, oops. So this part right here is going to be important for you to understand. So the value of each ratio is one. That would be similar to me saying 12 over 12 equals one because 12 inches is the same as one foot. So that's how they're equal to one. All right, so on this page, you can see that we have a note here. It says convert one rate to an equivalent rate by multiplying by a unit ratio or its reciprocal. And remember that a reciprocal is when you flip the fraction over. So it's the fraction inverted or the ratio inverted. All right, and now you can see my little light bulb friend. I know we haven't seen him for a while, but that means this is a very important concept or piece. It says when you convert rates, you include the units in your computation. Now, the reason I underline and put in a different color units in computation is because I know that you've often heard me say, um, make sure to include the units in your answer, like 644 feet squared, those are your units, the feet. Um, but this is saying that you need to include the units in your computation. That means the math portion. So like normally I tell you, you don't have to have feet in there because until the very end, until your answer. But when you're converting unit ratios and unit rates, it's going to have to have the uh, units in the computation. All right, and now you see a word here, and it's called dimensional analysis, or two words, rather. And that's the process of including units of measure as factors when you compute. Now, remember, factors are the two numbers or the numbers that you use to multiply by each other. So factors are going, when you use the units of measure as one of your factors, that's called dimensional analysis. So just under dimensional analysis, you have a problem. But I wanted to make sure to confirm with you or to clarify with you what the problem is representing. So what you want to write on your paper is convert from feet per second to inches per second. And then you want to copy the following problem. So you start with the unit ratio 10 feet per one second. And you take a look at your conversion chart that you see down here. 
And as you can see, we're gonna go from feet to inches, so we need to look and see what that conversion is. So I'm gonna go ahead and circle the conversion that there are 12 inches and one foot. So you wanna make sure that you write that on your paper. So as you can see, um, I went ahead and put 12 inches equals one foot in the bubble. That's what I'm gonna call it. It's called the bubble. I'll explain it more as we get started, um, as we get deeper into the problems. But for right now, you need to know that the first step in working these problems out is to create a legend of all of the conversions that you're going to need. So the first thing you're gonna do is do 12 inches equals one foot. And then they have you write an equal sign and they have you write the problem again. You wanna leave a decent gap between the first one and the second one. I believe the reason they have you do that is so that you can still see your original problem. So that right here is your original. Then you're gonna do the equal sign and even change colors. So now we have 10 feet and per one second. And now you have to think about what you want to get rid of. So remember, our final answer is going to be in inches per second. So you see that here? So what you want to think about getting rid of, let's try that again, is you need to be getting rid of the feet. So because you're getting rid of feet, you're going to go ahead and use your conversion, the one that you have up here in red, the 12 inches equals one foot. So you're going to go ahead and multiply, and you're going to put one foot on the bottom because that's the one you're getting rid of. So now you know that there are 12 inches in one foot. And before you do any of the math, you're gonna go ahead and cross simplify some of your units. All right, so what you're gonna to wanna to do now is make your conversion look like mine. So I went ahead and put the feet in red and then the other two pieces are in different colors. So you wanna set yours up like this now. And then I'm gonna cross simplify the units. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cross out the feet because that's what we're getting rid of. And just like when you cross simplify with fractions, now the feet are gone. So now on the top, what you're left with is 10, because remember the feet are gone, so it's just gonna be 10 times 12 inches over one second times one. Because remember again, the feet are gone. So now what you have left on the top is going to be 120 inches per one second. And you wanna box your final answer. So as you can see, this is why you wanna have your conversion or your customary units of measure and metric units of measure table handy all the time. And now as you can see, um, example one says a remote control car travels at a rate of 10 feet per second. How many inches per second is this? So the problem that they showed you above was exactly um, the example for example one. So I know um, in the book they work down, but it's usually best when you're converting um, fractions and unit ratios to work from side to side so that you can make sure that you've crossed everything out. Now you should be looking on textbook page 27 and you'll see examples two, three, and then the got it problems. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here you see example two. It says a swordfish can swim at a rate of 60 miles per hour. How many feet per hour is this? So the first thing that you need to do is you need to pull out the important information. So the first piece of information you're gonna to wanna to pull out is 60 miles per hour and feet per hour. So it's what they've given you and it's what they're asking for. So for step one, you can see on the right, I wrote determine the ratio that's given and the ratio that's needed. So we've done just that and now we're gonna set it up as a unit ratio. So what they've given us is 60 miles per hour. So underneath that, I have written miles per hour to feet per hour. Now you want to find the conversion that you're going to need for this problem. So I'm gonna pop over here to the conversion table and remind myself I'm going from miles to feet. So let's see if we can find a conversion that includes miles to feet. So right here at the bottom, you see 5,280 feet equal one mile. So let's go ahead and put that in our legend or the key. All right, so to make it a little easier, I went ahead and separated this. So we've got the problem here. <clears throat> And what you wanna do is either, um, probably on a separate sheet of paper, go ahead and write the steps. So first it says to write the unit ratio given and ratio needed. The next one says to write all conversions needed in the bubble key or in bubble key. So let me show you what that looks like. So here you see step one in the top where I went miles, to, miles per hour to feet per hour. And then we go um, 5,280 feet in one mile. So step three says to write the ratio and multiply to cross simplify the units. So back here on our paper, we're gonna go ahead and do that. We've written the ratio 60 miles per hour. We're going to multiply. And remember, we need to get rid of miles because we need to get to feet. So that means miles needs to go on the bottom. So one mile will go on the bottom. And that's, this is directly from our red conversion bubble or key bubble, bubble key. And then on top, we have 5,280 feet. So now we're gonna do exactly what we set this up to do, which is to cross simplify out the miles. 
And now we're going to rewrite the problem with the units that we have left. So we have 60 times 5,280 feet, and we have one hour times one. All right, so I actually gave in because I'm running out of space. So what I did was I worked down in the problem. I've never done this before, so this is new for me. But I went ahead and worked down just like they did in the book. So you want to do your problem exactly like this for number two. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip over here to let you see what we wrote here. Um, you want to make sure to get all of these steps here. So now we're looking at example three. It says Marvin walks at a speed of seven feet per second. How many feet per hour is this? So the first thing that you want to do is pull out the information, seven feet per second, and how many feet per hour. So this tells you what you're given and what you need. Then you wanna go ahead and write that you were given feet per second and that you're going to be going to feet per hour. So notice in this example, the feet stay the same and it's actually the time that's changing. So let's see how that changes our problem. First, we wanna write our unit um, ratio. So seven feet per one second. And then we need to look at our conversion table to see what conversion we're gonna need. Remember, we're basically going from seconds to hours. Now, I don't know if that's on here. It may not be, which is fine. Let's go ahead and look here. There we go. It's not, but we do know how many seconds are in an hour. So we just need to do that math off to the side. So we know that, so we're going from seconds to hours. We know that there are gonna be a lot of seconds in one hour. So now for this problem, we actually had to make our conversion key bubble. So 60 seconds is, and we have 60 seconds in one minute, and we have 60 minutes in one hour. So let's see how we're gonna work that out. So the first thing that you can see here is that we have seven feet in one second. So now you have to look at your conversion table and you have to look and see, well, this is the only one that has seconds in it. So I'm gonna to have to work with that one first. So that means I'm going to have to set the problem up as multiplying by, and then that means I have to put 60 seconds on top. And then remember, these have to be equivalent, so I have one minute on the bottom. But minutes is not what I need. Remember, I'm going to need um, hours. So now I need to still have another multiplication. And now, because I have minutes, I can do 60 minutes in one hour. So let me show you how those cross simplify. So now I've got the seconds that crossed out here and the minutes that crossed out here, and now I'm left with feet per hour. Now that's a quick check that you need to do at the end before you start doing any of your multiplication. Make sure that the only units that you have left are the ones that you need. So now you can see when I'm only writing what we have left, we've got seven feet times 60 times 60, one times one times one H. And you come up with your answer of 25,200 feet in one hour. So now I want you to go ahead and try the got it problems, A and B. Make sure that you show all of your steps, please. All right, so now you wanna take a look and see what you got, see if this is what it looks like. You wanna make sure that you have your units in the correct place, that you've cross-simplified the miles, that you have your bubble in the top right corner, and that you have your new problem written and your final answer is boxed. The next problem says an Amtrak train travels at 125 miles per hour. Convert the speed to miles per minute and then round to the nearest tenth. So you wanna go ahead and do that now. All right, so for this problem, I went ahead and made the bubble, which is 60 minutes equals one hour. So not all of the conversions you're gonna find on the table, especially when it has to do with time. There are a lot of those that you should already know. Then you have 125 miles per one hour. Now I stopped here because this one's a little different. So you wanna make sure you didn't get tricked on this one. Now, remember, you're trying to get rid of the hours and get them to minutes. So now that means you need to put the hour, which is one hour, on top. So you're gonna put the one hour on top and then you're going to put the 60 minutes on the bottom. And then just like before, we're gonna go ahead and cross out the hours. Now don't get minutes and miles mixed up because miles is MI and minutes are MIN. So now you wanna rewrite the problem with what you have left. So now as you can see, we have 125 miles times one and one times 60 minutes. So now we're going to have 125 miles per 60 minutes, but that's not gonna work because now what we have to do is find out how many miles per minute. So how are you gonna get one minute on the bottom? You guessed it, divide the top and the bottom by 60. So now you can see when we divide 60 by the bottom and by the top, you're going to have what you need on the bottom, which is that one minute. And on the top, you will get 2.1 miles. 
Now, you might have gotten something a little bit different, but you want to make sure that you remember that we were supposed to round to the nearest uh, tenth. So 2.1 miles per one minute. So that's your final answer. Make sure to put a box around it. So now finally we have made it to textbook page 28 and example four is a doozy. So let's go ahead and look at that one. So for this problem, it says the average speed of one team in a relay race is about 10 miles per hour. So immediately we're gonna put our box around 10 miles per hour. What is the speed in feet per second? So now this is a doozy because this is what we call a double conversion. So you wanna write that up at the top in the right hand side. But the good thing is you wanna start this exactly the way that we started the ones before. So the first things we're gonna start with is we are going to write 10 miles per hour, and then we're gonna look and realize we need to get to feet per second. Now, when you're gonna be converting both of them, oftentimes what I would do is have the end result on the end already. So we're looking at feet per second. So on the very end here, I'm gonna write feet per second. Oops. So now my conversion bubble is gonna be a little crazy because we've got to get from miles to feet and hours to seconds. So we're gonna have more than one conversion in there. So take a look at my conversion bubble and see what you think. I have 5,280 feet equals one mile, one hour equals 60 minutes, and one minute equals 60 seconds. So what I've done is I've made sure to cover miles, hours, feet, and seconds. So as long as, hold on one second. Rocky, stop it. As long as you have all of your units inside of that conversion bubble, miles, hours, feet, and seconds, you should be able to convert them. So let's go ahead and see how that'll work. So here's what this is gonna look like. The first thing that we're gonna try and do is get rid of that miles. So we know that there are 5,280 feet in one mile. So I'm gonna put the one mile on the bottom because I need to get rid of it and the mile is originally on the top. So now we can get rid of the miles. And as you can see, we have the feet that we need so we can stop with that portion, but now we need to get the hours into seconds. So from my conversion bubble, I have to pick a conversion that has hours in it so that I can get rid of it. So the only conversion I have that has hours in it is one hour equals 60 minutes. So let's go ahead and do that. So now I can go ahead and get rid of the hour. But again, now I'm left with minutes. I don't need minutes. I need seconds. So now I'm going to pick from my conversion bubble something that has minutes in it. And I have one minute equals, whoops. As you can see here, I have one minute equals 60 seconds. So we're going to use that one. Okay, so as you can see, we now have one minute equals 60 seconds. So now we can go ahead and cross out the minutes, minutes and minutes. So now, really quickly, you wanna check to make sure that what you have left is what you need. Well, you have feet right here and you have seconds right here and you needed to get to feet per second. So that's what you need. So now that we've crossed out all the units, we wanna go ahead and write our multiplication without all those extra units that aren't involved anymore. So you should come up with something that looks like this. And remember, you're able to use a calculator now to do these conversions. So now we have 52,800 feet per 3,600 seconds. But remember, our question asked for per second. So we need to now find the unit rate for that by dividing the top and the bottom by 3,600. And you should have come up with 14.7 feet per one second. I know there's a lot going on here, but if you follow the steps, you will be fine. All right, so as you can see here, I have headed your guided practice page for you. You need to make it look the same, and you wanna do questions one through four. You wanna make sure to show all your work and box all of your answers exactly as I showed you in the video. Good luck, and I will see you tomorrow.